Hello, it's Aga from Arvis Artist. Let's talk about render elements today. Let's begin. At the beginning, I wanted to create one video on this topic, but after I started to work on this, I decided to divide it into two parts. So don't forget to watch the second part that will come next week. Okay, now we can start to talk about render elements. Render elements are the passes that can be really helpful during the post-production process, but also during the production process when you, for example, want to check the quality of your reflections. I think the best way will be if we go straight to 3ds Max so I can explain everything well. To be able to work with the render elements, we need to add the ones we want first. To do that, we need to go to Render Setup and to the Render Elements tab. As you can see, I have already added some of the render elements that are related to the light mix. I've done this scene a while ago, so I don't really want to go through the process of adjusting lights again. Besides, we don't really have time for this, we have plenty of other things to discuss. But I will of course show you how to add these elements. So let's start from the light mix. Click Add and choose this element. Click OK. Here we go. We have the light mix added. It means that we are able to use the light mix tab in the frame buffer. As we start interactive rendering, you'll be able to add light layers, change its color and intensity. Otherwise, we'll get here the information that we need to add this pass. I delete it as we've already had this element. Now, the next step will be to add the selected light passes like in our example, environment, sun and lamplight. Add, light select. I like to change the names to keep it simple and straightforward, so I would name it environment. You can name it however you like, just remember, especially if you work with other people on the project, to keep naming easy to guess what is what. In this case, we'll only check this option here. Now, to add sun or other lights on the separate layer, we'll need to create two separate layers. I will show you how to add just one, but you will need to repeat this process every time you want to add the light or group of lights on the separate layer. As I mentioned before, I typically change the name, for instance lamp. Now, to add specific light on the layer, you need to select the light you want and click this little plus here. Here we go. We can also select lights we want to have on this pass by clicking here. Remember to change this option to include them. Except for light, you can also add to the light select element the objects that has light material on them. Ok, now let's talk about other elements. Here we have the basic ones. Then geometry render elements that contain information about the object's geometry. I don't really use them, but it can be helpful for instance to check what is the problem with the object, or for the post-production process to add motion blur effect without re-rendering. I'm not a big fan of doing such things in post, but it's good to know it's there. Then the elements that have some additional information that can be helpful for diagnosing purposes. We have masking render elements that are super handy and at the end shading elements like alpha, beauty and so on. Let me shortly explain what the basics one's about. On this pass, you will get all lights that bounced exactly once in the scene before hitting camera. Here, you will get the lights that are emitted directly into the camera with no bounces, so the source of light that you will see directly. On this pass, you will get lights that bounce at least twice. Here, you will get the information about the reflections in the scene. And here, about the refractions. This one is all about the transparency lighting, so for instance, if we have leaves that have the transparency effect in the material and the light is coming for it, you will get these leaves on this pass. And this one, it's used when you use volumetrics in your scene like fog. Now, I will show you which one I typically use or that in my opinion can be helpful from time to time. 
Keep in mind that it's not a great practice to add too many render elements, as each of them increases the RAM usage. Also remember that Alpha and Beauty are always added, so we don't really need to add it one more time. For sure, I add Reflect and Refract, Z-Depth, Mask, Wire Color, Alpha, just for your reference, but you know that it's always there. Maybe Components, so I will show you how it works. Let's add one more component element, so I'll be able to explain it better. Okay, start interactive rendering. Let's see how they look. Here are the reflections, so we can see all the reflections on this pass. Here are all the refractions. This ones I show you later as we need to set it up a little. Here is the wire color, so we have all colors of the object in this pass. It's super handy to post production. And this one I advise to always add, even just in case. It's also good to check this pass before starting rendering, because if you will have two objects with the same object color next to each other, it won't be helpful. How to change the color of the object? Let me show you. Choose painting, for instance. You can see it's black now. Let's click here and let's change it for pink, for instance. Here we go. This way we can control this pass. Alpha is helpful if you want to change the background in post, so here what is black is the sky for potential replacement. This one I also show you later as we need to do some adjustments. Ok, let's start with the mask. Go to the mask element and scroll down. Here we have options we can use. We can choose between monochromatic and RGB mode. Let's start from this one, so it means that this pass will be black and white. We have three options here. Let's start from object ID. Let's type 1 for instance here. And let's say I want to have the mask for the painting. What I need to do? I need to set the object ID of this painting to 1. To do this, you need to right click and choose the object properties. And then in the gbuffer section, type object ID 1. 0 is neutral. This is why we have only the black render. By default, all objects have ID 0. Ok, let's start interactive rendering. Here we go. You can see that we have the mask for the painting. Another option is material ID. Let's set it to 2 for instance. It works similarly, but in this case all materials with the ID 2 will be additionally rendered on the mask pass. It can be helpful, for instance, if you want to have the mask with all the objects with the same material and you need to adjust them later in Photoshop, so you don't need to select them one by one from the wire color pass, for instance. In visualizations it won't be a big deal, but in animations masking elements can be lifesavers. Ok, let's say I want all objects with the ceramic material which is on the vase on the render element 2. So what we need to do is to set material ID to 2. How to do this? Easy. Go to the material editor, copy the material, right click on this, go to material ID channel and choose 2. Let's start interactive rendering. Here we go. Now we have both of the objects included. Let's say I want an armchair on the same layer. I simply change the object ID to 1 and it will be on this layer too. We can have few options selected or just one. Let me show you the last one. Manual selection. We select the object and click plus. Awesome. But it's not always convenient to have everything in one color, especially if we have objects that are next to each other on the image, so then we can use RGB mode. The method is the same here. We just need to adjust the properties or select the right models. So now all objects with the object ID 1 will be red, with object ID 2 will be green and with 3 blue. Again, we can use different options here. Let me quickly show you.
now you've probably noticed that we don't have the table selection that is supposed to be green. It's because it consists of two materials. This is why we need to change material ID of both of the submaterials. Maybe we want to have the selection only of the metal part of the table. Then we can only change the material ID of this material. I will go back to the zero here. Sometimes it doesn't update, so we need to render again. You can see that we have lots of options here, so it depends on the situation what we would choose. Ok, now Z-Depth, which is used in the post to create the depth of field. Here we cannot really see anything, it's because Z-Depth uses the range from white to black. Minimum means pure white, maximum poor black. So white is what is close to minimum, black what is close to maximum. Everything in between will be greyish. Let me show you. Let's change the max to 2 meter. It's the distance from the camera. In this case, most of the image is black. If we go up with this value, we'll see more and more grey color. The goal here is not to lose depth, so I think something around 8 meter looks great. I will turn the depth of field off to show you how to create this effect in the post. I'm not a big fan of this, but sometimes it can be your only choice, so better to know how to do it than not. Ok, and the last one, components. Let's go to the settings. Here we have the possibility to divide basic render elements to direct and indirect. Let me show you the example. Direct are when the light bounces once. If more, they will be on the indirect pass. Let's say we want direct and indirect reflections separately. Ok, so let's uncheck everything except the direct reflect and name it direct. Now let's uncheck all except indirect reflect. Let's see the difference. Here we have direct, here indirect, and reflect will be the combination of both. To sum up, take a look here. We can separate the passes to have full control. So we can easily see that we can separate all the basic render elements here to direct and indirect. Plus, we can include or exclude lights that are emitted directly to the camera. Ok, that's it in terms of render elements I think are the most useful in Corona. Next week I will show you how to save them, how to use them in post-production and also I will tell V-Ray users which render elements to choose and which are responsible for similar effects. So stay tuned! Bye bye!